This illustration was drawn by Japanese animator Iyo Yoshinari. Known for creating Little Witch Academia and animating on all of these shows, he drew this as a joke when the Powerpuff Girls C anime was joining Cartoon Network. When I was just getting started as an animator, I saw this image and I was shocked. You see, there are two ways you can draw a character in animation, on model and off model. If you have ever tried drawing a famous character by eyeballing it, then you know how incredibly difficult it is to get it right. Then how is this anime artist capable of drawing all of these characters from different styles and all of them accurately on model? In this video, I will show you the secrets we use working in the industry and the number one mistake that beginner animators make when animating characters on model. Glenn Keane once said, the better we animators do our jobs, the more invisible we become. It's our characters who become the real ones. Long gone are the days where productions would cast animators basically as actors and have them exclusively animate a single character per production. Nowadays, each animator is responsible for all the characters in a shot, and no matter who gets which scene, the audience shouldn't be able to tell which artist did what. In order to maintain the illusion that these characters are real, all animators need to be capable of drawing all the characters in a production as if the entire team was a single artist. To do this, I separate my approach in two areas, learning the characters and animating the characters. We'll start with the learning. The goal is to absorb the characters into our bloodstream, so their shape language, range of expressions and their personality become second nature to us. One of the core aspects of learning anything is repetition. So of course the first thing that comes to mind is copying their character sheets over and over again. You can also do sketches based on any official material you can find. These first drawings will look bad, and that's okay, it's all part of the process. Instinctively, you'll start noticing important details that you need to preserve. Another common question is, can I trace the model sheets at this point to help the accuracy? And no, don't trace them. While I do recommend tracing model sheets in my solid drawing exercise, since accuracy is key, in this case, tracing will make you turn off your brain and stop learning. So I actually recommend you eyeball it first, and then you can set the model sheet next to your drawing and compare to see where the biggest differences are. Once you feel more familiar with the character, it's time to learn how to construct them with simple shapes. We need to break them down into simple volumes, sometimes the character sheets will include them, but not always. And there are two goals to this step, both making it easier for you to draw or modify complex parts of the drawing, for example exaggerating a pose or applying squash and stretch, while also help you maintain the proportions, which means we do want to be fairly accurate with the size of each part in relation to everything else. The simpler the shapes, the easier it will be to modify them, but they will carry less information. For example, in Lackadaisy, the crew agreed on Rocky's hat being a fess with a Pringle around it, and that helped so much. Once you have decided on a shorthand, it's time to focus on the details. This includes their range of expressions, the style of the hands, and any notes on how to draw them. For example, Tigger tends to have a lot of straight angles in his poses, while Pooh doesn't. This will even inform the style of movement, which is a whole other topic for another video, but take a note that every production manages their animation style differently. For this, it's important you look at the production style guides or model sheets. Every production has them. There's just as much how to do it as how not to do it, and you need to be wary of both. Of course, drawing characters of model is not a scene. To any rule, there's an exception. If you want to practice, there are two great resources to find production guides for both Western and anime productions, the Living Lines Library and Sete Dreams. The more you draw them through repetition, the more used to them you will become. I recommend you practice the widest range of expressions possible, that way you'll get your creative juices flowing for when it's time to animate. We don't always have all the time in the world to do this with every character in a production, but at least you know what to do if you're having trouble getting into the character. Once you feel familiar with a character's proportions, its simple volumes and production guidelines, it is time to animate them. You may not feel ready yet, and that is okay. Here's the number one mistake that beginner animators make. We may worry so much about the character's likeness that we'll start animating a scene using the shorthands we just learned focusing both in the proportions and the acting at the same time. You can't do both things at the same time. If you try, the only result you will get is a very stiff pose. Then you may try to exaggerate it by moving things around like 
pushing a little bit here and a little bit there but I promise you, it will never not be a stiff drawing. You just never get there. The right way to approach the animation is to draw the emotion first. Your only goal with these rough poses should be trying to convey the emotion or the situation. Draw the entire character for key poses. When only some of his parts move and not others, this is the telltale sign of a beginner. I've been guilty of this. Also, don't be afraid to squash and stretch the entire drawing. You can always exaggerate poses so much more than you think, depending on what the production allows, of course. Booga, booga, booga! Ah! I recommend you pay special attention to the line of action across the entire character. It can help you find a strong silhouette that conveys how the characters feel. When Disney was working on Tarzan, they decided to animate Jane in-house in the United States, while another team spearheaded by Glenn Keane animated Tarzan in France. This meant in sequences like this, each character was animated on a different continent, and then they had to compare notes during video calls using 1998's internet connection, which was a huge challenge in itself. But I want you to check out the rough animation for the character that the other studio is handling, the one that's more roughed out. They are not worried about the likeness at all, only the emotion that the poses communicate. This is what we should strive for. It took me years to learn this, but if you manage to apply this, I promise you, your character acting will reach another level. Once you have this rough pose, likeness comes second. Now you can think of anatomy and proportions and how to match them. But now how do we turn these rough keyframes into character animation that is on model? Well, there actually is a secret that animators don't want you to know, as it is very not glamorous, but it will allow you to draw any character in any pose with the right proportions. And it's a technique called place and trace. I have personally confirmed that animators at all levels of the industry do this. And of course, there's others that don't, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But it basically consists of placing the character sheet inside of your canvas and tracing any parts or drawings that you need to maintain the proportions. Once you have traced that drawing, you can modify it however you want. You can move things around to create new poses, but now you know the proportions will be correct. It's important to find a middle ground and not just rely heavily on the model sheets. That's why a strong rough animation is important. In a way, this is the same approach they have in cutout animation. You can always trace the rig to maintain the proportions, and you would only draw the extra parts you want to move. Then you can use the rigs to build the poses, even moving the symbols around, and only cleaning up the new specific parts of the pose. It's a whole other ball game. I'm just using it as an example, but I can make a video on it if you guys are interested. It's important to bust the myth that cutout animation doesn't require much drawing. It only requires less drawing, but you still have to draw a lot of new pieces when needed. Now, the anime industry doesn't rely on the place and trace technique too much, if ever. They still approach the rough, called a layout, in the same way where they only focus on the action and emotion. Then, the cut changes hands and goes to the Sakuga Kantoku, or Sakan, which is translated to animation director, but it's a member of the team responsible for making sure the character's likeness and proportions are always correct. They also fix any glaring animation mistakes, since they are more experienced. That is how they managed to separate the process by having different artists for each step. Then a third person or sometimes the same layout artist comes back to merge the original layout, the second notes, and any other notes they get into the Dai Nigenga pass, also called Nigen. This is how we end up with tie downs that are both super polished and on model. We still need to talk about the elephant in the room, the gap between Io Yoshinari's and any other pro animator's drawing skills and ours. Did he go through the same process while creating this illustration? No, pretty unlikely. There is no way around it, guys. All these professional artists have honed their skills to have strong fundamentals. It is what allows them to animate any style on command. But the positive thing is, this is a matter of volume of work. The faster you get those 10,000 ugly drawings inside of you out there, the faster you'll get to the good ones. I can't do this for you. All I can tell you is that sometimes it may feel unsurmountable, but in those times you need to trust in the process. That's why I made a video on the best exercise I recommend if you want to improve your solid drawing and understand the proportions and anatomy of any character you want. By animating and seeing your own drawings in motion, your brain gets to experience the volume of these objects in a way no other art form can give you. And then things will start clicking in your bloodstream. 
every artist has their own art style and like a fingerprint it is inescapable so my message is not that animators should be devoid of style to work in the industry quite the opposite the difference will be in how you bring your characters to life through your own experiences and emotions all we have to do is to adhere to the production style